on the September 11th anniversary. This morning, Zazi's lawyer entered a plea of not guilty. Officials anticipate more arrests will be made. Lindsay Davis, ABC News, New York. Iran's recent missile tests have put pressure on international negotiators to clamp down on that country's nuclear program. The Obama administration is planning to push for new sanctions if Iran does not comply with demands to come clean about its nuclear program. Diplomats from the five permanent members of the U.N. Security Council and Germany are scheduled to meet with Iranian leaders on Thursday. The storm blamed for at least 246 deaths in the Philippines is proving deadly in Vietnam as well. The system struck Manila over the weekend and gathered... Even though it's the last week of September, it's feeling more like November around the region with unseasonably cool temperatures and some wicked winds yesterday that caused some damage in the area. Are we in store for more of the same? Channing Frampton joins us now for a first look at the forecast. Well, folks, we've had a big change in the weather, in case you haven't noticed already, and it's not a change <coughs> for the better if you like the warm weather. Let's take a look at this. Winds, 17 miles per hour, pretty strong. We had a, lot of, a little bit of damage yesterday. Temperatures, 55 degrees. It's cold, it's wet and it's rainy out there with lots of wind. Not a good day to be out there. I'll have more coming up after the break. Pervez Musharraf, former president of Pakistan, is kicking off the Pittsburgh Speaker Series this Wednesday, September 30th at Heinz Hall in downtown Pittsburgh. At 8 o'clock, Musharraf will share his experiences and perspectives on world affairs, followed by an informal time of Q&A. Musharraf served as president of Pakistan from 1999 up until 2008. On Thursday, October 1st, the annual Career Expo will be here at Robert Morris in the Sewell Center from 12.30 to 4.30 p.m. The expo is an excellent opportunity for students to find part-time and full-time employment, as well as co-op and internship opportunities. Those attending should bring plenty of resumes, as well as get those resumes reviewed by the Career Center before the event. Those attending should dress professionally. Also on campus, you may have noticed some renovations that have recently been done to the gazebo. Army is live. Mark Coddington gives us an up-close look. The renovated gazebo has been... The renovated gazebo has been up and running with its big screen TV since students arrived back on campus in August. Outdoor television with exterior speakers mounted on each side of the TV. Brick was laid around the TV and tables and chairs surround the television for a comfortable surrounding that students can have lunch, watch sporting events, <coughs> or just hang out with friends. I think it's very nice. Um, I think it's a good place for people to hang out, watch TV. Uh, I've also studied here a couple times. I've used it like I'd say two or three times this year. I've been here a couple times, probably like nine or ten times. I um, I'm a freshman mentor, so we use it a lot, and people gather around and use it. I think it's a really good investment for the school. Programming for the 65-inch television is done by John Locke, assistant director of Student Life who hopes the new area will help bring students out of their rooms and increase campus life. I think the goal was to have uh, the area between Washington Hall and Ross to become a, a, student, a student zone where um, uh, programming activities, uh, where students can hang out during good weather times, and um, uh, that ultimately the current Alumni Commons gazebo will be replaced with a new structure that will be a little bit more um, user-friendly programming, things like this. And that's where the, uh, the TV is the first place of that sort of outdoor living room that we hope uh, the students will be able to enjoy in the near future. With the residents already using the new area on campus for various activities, it seems the renovations over the summer have been a great success for the campus as students welcome more changes to the university. Hopefully the amount of people using this area stays the same as winter quickly approaches. Reporting on the gazebo renovations, Mark Coddington, RME Live. The renovated gazebo has been up and running with its big screen TV since students arrived back in, on campus in August. This Saturday, October 3rd, the August Wilson Center will present What Does Trouble Mean? Nate Smith's Revolution. 
This documentary is the latest film production by the Center for Documentary Production and Study, written and produced by Army graduates Erica Pfeiffer and Alexander Wilson, and edited by Brad Grimm. The documentary takes viewers through the life of the forgotten hero Nate Smith through the use of archival footage and eyewitness accounts. The film premieres at 2 p.m. Coming up after the break, the Senate has a showdown over health care. And could the Olympics be heading for the Windy City? Plus, Channing Frampton has your weather forecast. Stay tuned. Once they've outgrown their toddler seat, they're still not ready for adult safety belts alone. Four foot nine is the magic number. Until then, kids need a booster seat. Make sure your little pumpkin gets there safely. Visit BoosterSeat.gov. 200 years ago, Lewis and Clark set out to discover an all-water route to the Pacific. But what they really discovered in themselves and everyone they encountered are qualities we can still learn from today. commemorate the Lewis and Clark Bicentennial. We invite you to walk with them at lewisandclark200.org and see what you discover, because their trail winds through us all. At Robert Morris University, we explore our world. We made documentaries in Chile. I'm taking business students to Mexico nursing services to families in Nicaragua. We're going to study media management in Germany. At Robert Morris University, we're preparing students for tomorrow's careers. That means gaining a global perspective. Come check out how your world can expand at RMU. The Senate Finance Committee is currently deliberating over a plan to add a public option to the proposed health care plan. Senator Jay Rockefeller, the man who suggested the amendment, says that unfair practices from insurance companies require a not-for-profit option for consumers. But congressional Republicans say that a public option will lead to the government eventually taking over all health care coverage. Earlier today, the language for the public option was rejected by the committee. President Obama has taken a recent trip to Copenhagen to make a push to the International Olympic Committee to choose Chicago as the site of the 2016 Summer Olympics. The Chicago bid faces competition from Rio de Janeiro, Brazil, Madrid, Spain, and Tokyo, Japan. It will be the first time that an American president has ever attended an IOC vote, and the IOC will vote on the host city this Friday. Floodwaters are receding in Manila, uh, the Philippines, after a deadly typhoon. Typhoon Katsana slammed into the capital Saturday, leaving about 80% of the city underwater. Disaster officials say the storm killed about 240 people. Close to 40 others are still missing. Almost 2 million people have been affected by the typhoon. Several nations are pledging to help. Well, we heard about it at the top of the broadcast. The weather is getting colder. It's getting more miserable. In other words, it's Pittsburgh in the fall. So let's just see what Channing Frampton's got for the rest of this upcoming week. Thanks, guys. Well, in case you haven't noticed, the weather has taken a turn downhill. Look at the winds right now. West, out of the, out of the west, at 17 miles per hour. It's been quite a blustery past 24 hours. We had a, actually a peak gust of 36 miles per hour right here in Moon Township yesterday. So it's been windy out there. Temperatures are holding at 55 degrees with a dew point of 46 degrees at this hour. Humidity is at 72%. So even though it is cooler, the humidity is up there because the temperature and dew point are pretty close to one another. Pressure is holding at 29.95 inches as a low pressure system makes its way off the east coast. And let's take a look at the temperatures that are occurring around the local area. You can see 55 in Beaver Falls, same here in Pittsburgh and Butler, 
54 in Burgettstown, 53 in Washington, and we have 53 in Catanning and 54 in New Ken. The cold spot, 50 at Greensburg. Our forecast for tonight looks like this. We have, could have a low of 47 degrees, a little cooler maybe even than the, um, in the river valleys. Chance of rain showers throughout the evening as we get a little bit of preseason lake effect precipitation coming down with the low that just moved through the area. And our almanac for today looks like this. Our actual high was 58 degrees earlier this afternoon with a low of 47 earlier this morning. It's going to get a lot cooler tonight, so be prepared, folks. Normals for this time of year should be 70 and 49, so we're running about 12 degrees below normal for this time of the year. Not a good sign. Our records are 89 and 35. For tomorrow, expect temperatures to be right about right where they are today, 57 degrees for a high. Chance of rain showers continuing throughout the rest of tomorrow and into the latter part of this week, but with the five-day forecast, it looks a little better. If you can see, temperatures are going to be moderating beginning on Thursday with a high of 64 degrees, and the sunshine will return. But get ready, because Saturday, the temperatures are going to be warm enough, but the rain does return with another round of showers moving down from the northwest. That's all I've got, guys. Take it back to the news desk. Thanks, Channing. Later this week, Colonial Theater will be presenting their show for this fall, Rent. Channing, who is a member of the show's cast, gives us an inside look at this modern rock musical. Looking for something to do this week? RMU's Colonial Theater is staging this season's first show, Rent, starting Wednesday, and it runs through this Sunday. The Pulitzer Prize winning rock opera is directed by Dr. Ken Gargaro. And now that I've uh, absorbed the material, I'm, I'm really in love with the show. It's an uh, expression of idealism, uh, passion, of uh, sticking to your ideals, and uh, the music's really great. Uh, it is somewhat hard to understand because it flows so fast, so you have access to the lyrics. Give the lyrics a, a, a read or the, the tape a listen, you'll, you'll probably enjoy the show a lot better. Having revolutionized Broadway in the 90s, many RMU students are thrilled that this show is here at RMU and are very excited to be performing this intense music. I'm really excited. I'm real, like, I feel like we all kind of like know what we're doing, but now it's just getting the character part of it. This is my first time where I have like an actual name in a show, so I'm very, I'm nervous, but I think it's nervous excitement. With the weather heading for a cool down, it'd be a great idea to come check out RMU's production of the rock opera, Rent. Tickets can be obtained in the Student Life office or the door for $10. It's going to be a rock concert of a show, so reserve your seat now. Coming up in sports, the Steelers are up against the division rival. The Penguins prepare for the regular season. The chase for the cup continues, and the FedEx Cup wraps up. All this after the break. At Robert Morris University, individuals matter. And these days are about more than business. We're nurses, computer experts, engineers, future teachers, graphic designers, and some of us are D1 student athletes. And we're still the best business school around. Every day we're changing lives at Robert Marsh University with active, engaged faculty teaching active, engaged students. Come check out how your world can expand at RMU. Her final exam started 10 minutes ago. She'll wake up hungover and won't remember what happened last night. Extreme behaviors have extreme costs. Thanks again, sir. I look forward to being an asset to this company. My pleasure. You'll hear from us in about a week with our decision, okay? Sounds good. Thanks again. Wow. That young man has real potential to work here. I guess all we have left to do now is make sure there are no surprises is on that face page thing. Well, I found something I think you'd like to see. Oh, 
That's a shame. Woo! <laughs> True. How'd you interview though? Oh man, I nailed it. It's in the can. Extreme behaviors have extreme costs. The Bengals having not lost a game in Paul Brown Stadium since 2001. In that time, the Steelers have won two Super Bowls and the Bengals have made the playoffs one time. But none of this would matter in this game as it is a new era of Bengals football. So let's head to Cincinnati to see how this game would play out. All right, so Marvin Lewis, his job could be in jeopardy without a winning season by the Bengals. Beating the Steelers at home could help a lot, though. Steelers now three up 3-0. Three Roethlisberger going to fake the handoff. He rolls out, evades the pressure, and he's going to find the man he faked it to, Willie Parker. He's going to make a nice little move and get into the end zone 27 yards for the touchdown. Then after both teams exchange field goals into the second quarter, the Steelers driving here in the third, and it's gonna be Ben Roethlisberger throwing a pick right there to Jonathan Joseph, and he's gonna take this all the way to the house for six points, 30 yards for the score. The Bengals now try to claw back into it, 13 to nine now. Then after a Roethlisberger one yard run, it's now 20 to nine when Carson Palmer hands this one off to Cedric Benson, who at this point had been mostly neutralized by the Steelers defense. But that was his longest run of the day, 23 yards for the touchdown. Two-point conversion fails, it's 20 to 15. Then, late in the fourth quarter, the Steelers' defense being pushed around all day, and then a four-yard touchdown to Andre Caldwell. Marvin Lewis signals for two, they would convert and go on to win that game, 23 to 20. Finishing up the preseason on Sunday with a four to one loss to the Detroit Red Wings, the Pittsburgh Penguins have questions to answer as regular season play approaches Friday. They've added forwards Mike Rupp and Chris Conner, both of whom could factor in as replacements for Game 7 hero Maxim Talbot, who was out for the beginning of the season with shoulder, shoulder surgery. Jay McKee and Alex Goligoski will step in to replace the loss on the blue line of Rob Scuderi and Hal Gill, who have both gone via free agency. And in the net, Marc-Andre Fleury will have a new backup in the form of Brent Johnson, who comes over from the Washington Capitals. Repeating as Stanley Cup champions is not an easy task, and the Penguins will start their journey against the New York Rangers at the Mellon Arena on Friday at 7.30. You can find coverage on FSN and 105.9 The X. And changing sports now, coming off a win in last Sunday's chase for the Sprint Cup opener at Loudoun, New Hampshire, Mark Martin was looking to extend his points lead even more in this week's AAA 400. However, Mark Martin's Hendrick Motorsports teammate Jimmy Johnson, the three-time defending cup champion, had other ideas as he sat on pole for the event. How would this teammate battle end up? Let's speed down to Dover, Delaware and take a look. All right, so we're gonna start here, the Monster Mile as it's known. We'll pick it up lap 31. It's Tony Stewart nudging into Joey Logano, Reed Sorensen, Martin Truex Jr., Robbie Gordon, all involved. See Logano here, his car rolls over seven times, does some barrel rolling. And then fortunately enough, it lands here on all four wheels. And as a testament to the new car of tomorrow technology, Logano climbs out of the car and would be okay. Then we'll pick it up now, lap 176. Jimmy Johnson makes the pass on Kurt Busch to retake the lead, and this would be a lead he would not relinquish as he heads here to victory lane, climbing out of the car. Your top five would be Mark Martin in second there, Kenseth third, Montoya fourth, Kurt Busch in fifth. Your point standings, Mark Martin still with a slight lead as Johnson closes it up now to within 10 points of that lead. And now as we change it up here, we'll head over to the golf course. And it's now the third year of the PGA Tours FedEx Cup playoff system. The point standings had not been as close as they were in the first two years as they were heading into the final event this year, much to the delight of PGA Tour executives. The Tour Championship featured the top two players in the world, Tiger Woods and Phil Mickelson, duking it out for both the tournament and the FedEx Cup. Mickelson, four strokes off the lead heading into Sunday's round, rallied from behind to win the Tour Championship at nine under, three shots ahead of Woods. Wood's second place finish, however, was enough to win him the FedEx Cup, the second of his career. I'm Ed Albert, and that's your Sports Pulse. And speaking of sports, last weekend was, of course, the homecoming game here at Bobby Moe, but also on Thursday night, the homecoming dance. RMU Live cameras were there to cover the action. A few RMU TV anchors and producers could be found there as well. Some delicious cuisine to be had 
there at the Holiday Inn right here in Moon Township, and also quite a bit of dancing, and that looked a bit like some of the swinging 60s right there, some of that lighting. Did you go there? I did. I went. I had a good time. What oh. about you? Well, that's it. well I, I went there. <laughs> I'll say I went there. But uh, we'd like to thank everybody working hard behind the scenes here that make this happen, our producer Chris Walker and the entire crew. I'm Chris Beginski. And I'm Casey Folga. Thank you, everybody, for watching. Good night.